Hi, welcome back to the Distressed Princess. I've got a fun one for you today. We're gonna do some more Christmas Kirkland's dupes. We're gonna start it off with a Christmas tree and this one has a birch log looking planter, but we can do it for so much cheaper than you can buy it. This is a Christmas tree that I already had on hand. I paid $10 for it at Hobby Lobby last year. And the planter I'm using came from the Dollar General store last spring. And it's the perfect thing to use for this project, I believe. But you can use whatever planter you have on hand or even a large tin can would work too. I'll be using some painter's tape to make this birch wood look on this planter. It is the simplest thing to do. Just tear off some longer strips of the tape and start pressing it down onto your planter or your tin can, whatever you're using, but make it where it has wrinkles in it. You wanna purposefully let some of that tape fold up on itself so that it is wrinkled and craggly looking all around the planter. Keep on layering until the whole thing is covered and making sure that you leave some little flappy do pieces like this because that makes it look like peeling up birch wood. This is how it should look when it's all covered. The next step is to paint it all up using white chalk paint. I had to use two coats because I was covering blue painter's tape, but if you're using masking tape or a more neutral color tape, then you might could only use one coat and it would be fine. After the white paint has dried, then it's time to add in the details. And the first detail that I'm going to add in will be with some gray paint. And I'm just going to put a little bit on my little paper plate over here, dab my bristle brush into it, and I'm gonna do a little dry brushing of this gray paint all the way around the planter so it'll bring out the definition and all the details in that birch wood that we made. Then I go back with a smaller brush and some black paint, and I'm just painting on some various little black lines onto the planter for a more realistic look. And that's all there is to it. Now you have a birch log planter. Now it's time to add the tree. And the one at Kirkland's is a lit tree, so I'm going to add some string lights. This came out so pretty, and I am so happy with the results. The next dupe is this whole set of wooden Christmas trees and they looked like they would be easy to replicate instead of paying the $30. Now you might already have some scrap wood to make this project, but if you don't, then take a trip to a lumber store. I went to Menards and they have this value wood section and I got two really nice pieces of pine, I think it is, for only $1.29 each. Then using the dimensions of the trees that were actually in Kirkland's, I drew out the trees onto the piece of wood and kindly asked my husband to take it down to his power saw and cut them out for me. So that's pretty easy, just cutting out some triangles. Now we need to find some stars to use. And I had this pack of stars that came from the Dollar Tree around the 4th of July, I believe. But if you don't have any in your craft stash, then you can take a trip to Hobby Lobby or even Michael's and find some wooden stars to go on top. The next step is to paint and stain your trees. And so I'm starting with the one that is supposed to look like it's a wood stain. And my first inclination was to use the Waverly Antique Wax. And so I watered down some of it and I applied it to the wood and I guess uh, different colors of stain 
uh, does differently on different kinds of wood. Like this is naturally kind of a yellowish wood. So when I put the antique wax on it, it came out very yellowish and I wasn't really pleased with that. So I had to remedy it. So the next thing that I did was use my Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and I watered it down and I put that on and let it set for a little bit and wiped it back off. And then that was more of the warm wood color that I was going for. And while I had that brown watered down paint out, I went ahead and painted the stars. Now I'm not for certain, but I think the stars in Kirkland's might be gold. It was hard to tell on the box, but um, I'm just gonna leave mine with a wood stain. Next, I'm going to work on the green tree. I had two different kinds of green paint, a Christmas green and marsh green. I decided to use the Christmas green and darken it up with just a little bit of black paint. Now with my custom color of green paint all mixed up, I applied it to the tree. And the smallest tree in the bench is a white tree, but I'm going to use sort of a white wash with it because the little white tree also has some white markings on it for like little uh, pine needles or something. And I want them to be able to show up really good. So that's why I'm using a white wash instead of straight white paint so that when I use the straight white paint for the little details, it will show up. To soften up the brown on the brown tree, I used some sandpaper to kind of distress it a little bit and blend in that color so that it looks a little bit more like the Kirkland's version. Then I drew on some rectangles. Going off of the picture from the Kirkland's site, I just made some small little rectangles where the words will go and I just used a paint stir stick to make straight lines. So that I would get nice clean lines, I used some scotch tape where I drew the pencil marks and I'm going to tape it up so that the paint only goes where that rectangle is. And while I'm painting in these little black rectangles, I wanna thank everyone who is a new subscriber. I'm so happy to have you here. After the black paint is dry, then peel the tape off for the satisfying reveal. The next thing I did was add the words. The words are merry and bright. And I'm using a white paint pen from the Dollar Tree to write them into my black rectangles. And I just tried to use the best handwriting I possibly could. And I've learned over the years, in order to center your words within something like this rectangle, then you'll wanna start with the middle letter or the middle two letters and work your way outwards. Now it's time to add the details to each tree. The green tree had some stars, so I just used the smallest, finest paintbrush that I had and some white paint to paint in some stars. The white tree had just some little tiny lines that would go straight down, so I painted those on. And the brown tree had white dots that looked like snow, so I just used the end of my paintbrush and tap those little white dots on. And the final step is to hot glue the stars on top and this dupe is done. next one is another version of a Christmas tree and it had jingle bells on it but the price tag was $25 and I know we can do better than that. The basics that you'll need are two of the wooden Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree, a wood round from the Dollar Tree, a wooden dowel which came from the Dollar Tree and not pictured just yet but you'll need a bag of jingle bells from the Dollar Tree. The idea is to sandwich this wood dowel 
in between the two Christmas trees and that wood dowel is going to be cut and we're going to drill a hole in the wood round for the wood dowel to go down into so it'll stand up. So I made a mark about a couple inches down from where the tree stump ended onto the wood dowel. Then a little trick of the trade is to use some dog toenail clippers from the Dollar Tree to cut that wood dowel off. Now at first I used my hot glue gun to glue that wood dowel in between the two trees but later on I wind up adding some wood glue so save yourself trouble and just start with the wood glue. Then I measured and marked the center of the wood round. I picked a drill bit that was the same size as the wood dowel and drilled a hole into the center of the wood round but not going all the way through. Before I assemble anything, I'm going to paint the tree and the wood round with white chalk paint. I mixed up a little bit of gray and white paint to do a little bit of distressing around the edges of the tree and around the wood round. Now I'm going to paint the jingle bells and the easiest way I found to do that was to take a little bit of that white chalk paint and mix in just a little tiny dab of water to make it a little runny and then I put all the jingle bells inside there and I shook it up and swirled it around and then I dumped them all out onto a paper plate to dry. And while the bells were drying I assembled my tree onto the stand and so I'm using some super glue wood glue that comes from the Dollar Tree. It truly is my favorite wood glue and I'm going to put that down into the hole that I drilled and then I'm going to put the wood down, down inside. Then finally it's time to attach the jingle bells to the tree. Now I'm just using hot glue because I couldn't really think of a better way to attach them. I would have liked for them to be able to hang on a wire or something, but I just couldn't figure the best way of doing that. I think it's a pretty good dupe for the Kirkland's version. What do you think? The second I saw this gorgeous embroidered table runner from Kirkland's, I wanted it and so I decided to try to make my own version. Now what I'm about to show you can apply for so many different things. You can make placemats and table runners and tablecloths and curtains all using a cheap canvas drop cloth. This one came from Menards and I paid about $6. The first thing you'll need to do is measure out the piece of drop cloth that you're going to want to use. So I am going off of an existing table runner that I already have in my home. It was 16 inches wide and so I'm going to measure out uh, 16 inches and then I'm going to give an extra inch making it 17 inches for my seam allowance and I'm going to mark my drop cloth at that 17 inch width. And here I've cut the drop cloth down to the 17 inch width and I'm using the existing um, length that it already was and I'm going to use the existing seams that's already on it. So that means I only have one raw edge that I need to hem. Before we add the hem, you'll want to iron out that canvas as smooth as you can. Now for the hem, we're going to be using heat bond tape. You could absolutely use a sewing machine or you can absolutely use some fabric glue, but this is what I had on hand, so this is what I'm using at my house. So the first step in using heat bond tape is to fold over your raw edge about an inch and then you're going to iron that in place. Once you've ironed in the hem all down the whole length of your table runner, 
then you'll start using your heat bond tape. It is really simple to use. All you do is tuck it right into that hem that you ironed in and then you'll use a damp washcloth to lay on top and then press your iron down on top just for a few seconds, like less than 10 seconds. And something about the steam from that damp washcloth is going to really set that heat bond tape to sticking and making sure your hem is tight and secure. Then just keep on going down the line and redampening your washcloth when needed. Now that your table runner is all hemmed up and ready to go, it's time to decorate it. And I'm using some ribbon that I got from Walmart. They were 97 cents and $1.44. Then I'm going to use just the white pom-poms and I'm going to use some white felt. Oh, and some of these white felt snowflakes that come off this garland from the Dollar Tree. So going off the picture of the uh, table runner on the Kirkland's website, I was going to make five trees because there's five on the Kirkland's version, but I only wound up making four because I miscalculated and I made a tree kind of bigger than it needed to be. But anyway, it still turns out really cute in the end. And this is just an idea of some of the things that you can use to decorate your own table runner. But take this as inspiration. I think it would also be really cute just to cut out some triangles of some green and white or maybe some plaid or buffalo check fabric. Just cut out some triangles to use for Christmas trees and then maybe some ribbon or jute string for trunks. So what I've done here is I have used fabric glue to glue down some pieces of that gold ribbon and fabric glue to glue down the small white pom-poms to make the first tree. The next tree I used the shiny black ribbon and I cut it in half because the tree trunk on this one was pretty thin in the picture. So I cut it in half. I'm using fabric glue to glue all this stuff in place. So the trunk goes down first. Then I cut off some pieces for limbs and they were special. They looked like they had sort of a fringy edge. So I just took my scissors and I cut some fringe into that little tiny piece of ribbon, which was a little time consuming. And if you can find some trim already made to look like fringe, that'd be your best bet if it's cheap enough. But you know, I'm going with what I have and you know, I'm always budget friendly. So for 97 cents, I just went ahead and frayed my own ribbon. The next tree in line is pretty simple. It's just a piece of white felt cut into a triangle and then some of the gold ribbon for the tree trunk and limbs, but it can't be glued on just yet. You have to make the next tree first because it is sort of in the background. And it is another black ribbon tree that I've cut the ribbon in half lengthwise. And so I have the black ribbon for the trunk and then I'm gonna cut some limbs, again, cut in half lengthwise to make the thinnest ribbon possible. And then it's going to be a little downward um, direction of the limbs. This is the tree that I went too big on and lost room to make the last and final tree. I should have made these limbs a lot smaller and then I could have fit the fifth tree onto the table runner. And like I said, the center white tree, it is kind of on top of the two black trees so it goes on last and it has the gold ribbon for the trunk and then I cut some little pieces of gold ribbon for some branches. If I would have had a little fabric star or some gold fabric I could have cut some stars out of, I probably would have went that route, but since I didn't, I made my stars using that same gold ribbon. The Kirkland's version didn't have anything on top of the black trees, but since I was missing a tree, I felt like my black trees needed something so I took two of the bigger white pom-poms and I glued them on top. Now this was the part that I was waiting for all along. I wanted to put these snowflakes on so bad and they're really easy to take apart from the garland that you get at Dollar Tree. If you're careful just slowly peel them off they're just hot glued on 
and then use your own glue to glue them down to the canvas. Then finally, the last step is to add the little polka dot snowflakes that I'm just using the back end of a paintbrush and dipping it in my acrylic paint and putting it right onto the drop cloth. And since this is a table runner, you really would need to do all this on the other end as well, or just use it as a decoration. The last Kirkland's dupe today is this wooden snowflake. I would recommend using this dupe if you wanted a lot of these snowflakes to decorate with because you'll be able to make yours for only about three dollars and even cheaper if you have scrap wood. But I bought these two wood pieces from the Dollar Tree. I have two paint star sticks and 16 tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to need to cut one of these wood pieces in half so I marked it at the halfway point. I'll be using my hand saw and I want to show you something that I don't think everyone knows. These hand saws have a lip on them that is supposed to hang off the edge of your table or your work surface and that way it's secure and not moving around all over the place while you're sawing. Now that the one piece is cut in half, the rest is all just assembly with wood glue. So you'll take your first full piece and you'll make a cross with the other pieces that you cut in half. Glue them all together. Now make a crisscross with your paint star sticks and glue them down. Now you'll use two tumbling tower blocks on each of the end pieces. On the chunky fat pieces, I did just like the picture off of the Kirkland's website and I made one straight line with two of the Jenga blocks. And on the paint star sticks, I did two Jenga blocks that are making sort of a V shape. Let your wood glue dry at least overnight before you begin painting with white chalk paint. And now we're gonna do something that my sister and I used to call dirtying up. So when we would paint a piece of furniture, like a coffee table or a bedside table, when we would paint it white back in the day, we wanted to kind of primitive and distress the edges and we would call it dirtying it up. And that's where we would take any kind of brown paint, and in this case, I'm using the Waverly Antique Wax, and use a foam brush, and just with a very, very tiny bit of that brown paint or wax on your brush, just dab it onto the edges and corners of your project. There is really no right or wrong to this process, but if you do get some brown paint where you don't want it, just cover it back up with some white paint and you're good to go. So what do you think of my Kirkland's dupes today? I'm pretty proud of them. I think they turned out pretty good and I am happy to use them in my kitchen instead of paying all that money for similar items. Thanks for spending time with me and watching my video. If you liked what you saw, then give me a thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel. I have another one of my favorite Christmas videos loaded up right here for you. Click this link, it'll take you right to it, and until next time, bye!